Anyway, enough about mine. What did you say that your goals are for Q2? What is your, okay, you said your garage. Does that really excite you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I was, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if she's going to ask me how I'm going to celebrate. You know how I celebrate? Even just the 30%, you know what I do? It's like, is I'll be walking around in the house and I'm like, I need to go down and look at what I just did. And I'll go and I'll look at it. And I'm like, God, it looks really good. And then, you know, a couple of days go by, I got to look again. It looks really good. Like I continue to look at it and enjoy it visually. That's celebrating oh. to me. And good job, Becky. Like that makes me feel so good. Just seeing. Hey everyone, this is Becky. And I'm Angie. And welcome to Real Talk with Becky and Angie. We have three uh, shelving units. It'd be wonderful to have cabinets and everything built in and everything, but we don't. These two shelving units, I wanted to m move one to one area and move the other one to the other one because it blocked the window. Oh, yeah. So just making that shift and now I can see the whole window when I drive in, it's like, uh, just it feels brighter in there. For sure. Even though it's the north side of the house, so it doesn't really get sun or anything, yet it just feels, it feels like... I've accomplished something and that feel, it feels good. Are you open to a question, another question about the goal that you've set on the garage? Mm -hmm. Around the garage? Yeah. What about breaking it into smaller goals? Well, that's what oh, I've been doing. Okay. Like it's like. Because what I heard was the like whole the whole garage. garage. So in Q2 or yeah. the next eight weeks, it's a specific section or is it still just clean? The, the garage is clean. The, the whole garage. Okay. Yeah. Does that work for you? Or what if it was, you know, like. You move the shelves. What does that next phase look like for you? So it's so funny. I mean, this is this is the kind of stuff that happens in my head. This is what this is what goes on. This is what stops me. I'm going to be real here. This is the shit that stops me from moving forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the cedar chest that's it, that was in between my car and my son's car that's that sits there. It's basically the shelf for all the stuff in the garage. There's a towel on there to protect it. My husband's golf shoes are on there. Uh, the solar lights that I want to put out in our, our yard when it's- When you actually see sun again. On. Yeah. Well, it's, it's sunny today. It's nice. Uh, but then on top of that, the very top of that, um, during Thanksgiving last year, my son's um, car- broke the axle. He broke the axle on his car. So the de for some reason, the dealership gave us the old axle. Why? Why did he give it to us? Souvenir. Why? And so it's the bo It's in the box and it's sitting there and I don't know what the heck to do. It's really heavy. It's broken. Why are we keeping it? Do you throw it in the garbage? So I don't know what to do with it. And so because I don't know what to do with it, that's stopping me from working on my cedar chest. That's it. That it. I say it out loud it goes on in my head all the time. I say it out loud. I hear myself saying it. I hear how silly it sounds, yet it's real. Saying, it is what's why is stopping that silly? me. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's what's stopping me from moving then forward on maybe, the cedar chest. Maybe, just maybe the goal is, because you said you're doing eight weeks, maybe it's at a four-week check-in point, have you moved the axle, right? <laughs> because you yeah, get, my get axle your axle in gear. Axle in gear. I mean, seriously, like break them down because you have your checklist and you can do all of that, but putting so much pressure on it's all or nothing and that you put some real energy around that. This is the shit that's stopping me. Yeah. Then make it something that you feel like, okay, that when you get that axle moved, I, I can feel it. You're going to be like, I'm, you're going to be like, yeah, I moved the axle. It's a big deal to you. But what I hear is that this big, like clean the garage. The garage is clean. Great. But break it down in chunks. Chunk, chunk. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's why, that's why I say my, my goal is the language is my garage is clean. It's, it is a bunch of projects. It's a bunch of projects in there that could be done, you know, one at a time, two at a time, however it is. Um, that it really is a whole bunch of projects inside. It's not a weekend okay. job. If there's no, if it were a weekend job, I would have done it a long time ago. Well, I have done it. But oh, I was going to say, okay, see, I was going to say that next. And then what? Once the garage is clean, then yeah. what? Keeping the garage clean. Mm, Keeping the garage clean. Yeah. I good know. luck. It's so funny when I hear people say I clean the garage and I'm like, didn't you just do that a couple of weeks ago? Oh, is that what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to do it on the regular. You just, it's upkeep. <laughs> I, I did, I purged my whole house two years ago. It was about two years ago, probably. I did the Marie Kondo, like, does it bring me yeah. joy thing? 
I think I did the entire house. Well, my section, my, my area of the house, there's spaces that are Jake's that are just specifically, you know, I don't get into his world. All of the void that I created has been filled. It's weird how that works. So it's uh-huh. that abundance mindset where there's a void, it will be filled. <laughs> and I don't know how, especially when I sell so much stuff, uh-huh. but it's just, it yeah. fills. So I give huge credit. If it, those people who are minimalist and can live like a minimalist, which Felicia and Tyler, my son-in-law and daughter are very close to that. I'm like, how do you do that? God bless them with two kids and they're minimalist. Oh, it's insane. How do they it's do insane. that? It's insane. They have no attachment to anything. Okay. So do you think that's a generation thing? It is totally, thing? totally. I really do. I think that is we can, segment number three. And here we go. <laughs> you could do a whole nother one. Yeah. I really feel like, so I look at my mom and my dad, they. Oh yeah. Look at down yeah. the generations. And so like, I'm yeah. less, so, you know, I'm, I'm less attached to things, but do I have my things that I'm not letting go of? Absolutely. Felicia and Tyler and their f- group of friends, they have no attachment to things. It, I'm, I'm astounded. And they go through like, you talked about your closet. If you don't wear it, get rid of it and all that other stuff. Donate it. I own that I don't, even though I sell a lot of clothes, I still have things in my closet. I still have things from high school that I don't want to let go of for whatever reason. Yeah. Wow. But there are only like a few things, but they will rotate their whole wardrobe, which, hey, I'm all on board because it comes over to my house and then I sell it. So for kids clothes and their clothes, I'm like, the you know, the days of having the different closets for the different seasons and the different, they're absolutely correct though. They don't wear the same things over and over again. So they, that's just their lifestyle. It's just different. They don't wear like the same five outfits like I do. <laughs> For two or three years. No, no. When that season's over, they may, no, they just, they just get new stuff. I mean, it's not in a wasteful kind of way. Cause I want to say that it sounds bad, but, um, they're very organized. They don't have a lot of, this is where I freak out though. Go to pull open, like need to get a serving spoon, open the drawer and there's one serving spoon. We have five dishes to serve. You know, there's corn, there's mashed potatoes, there's, you know, all those, you know, type thing. I'm like, one spoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my judgment. Okay. I'll use that spoon now <laughs> you, and you can use it for that. Okay. Just give it, let just rotate the spoon around. <laughs> but then there's me who has probably 20 serving spoons and I never have 20 dishes, you yeah. know? And then my mom got like, we won't even go there. She's got three genera- three generations of, you know, all their stuff. So Yeah. Yeah, you haven't experienced that yet, though, because Henry hasn't set up household yet. Well, he's in an apartment with three other guys, but yeah, it's it's not not there yet. Yeah, what do you think of the minimalist yet. lifestyle? Could you do it? I dream about it, and some and sometimes I'm like, well, let's see, what could I eliminate? And I, I've done some elimination and gotten rid of things. And just like you said, though, there's a void, and it gets filled before you know it. It's filled. So. Uh, I'm also, I don't like clutter. I do not like clutter. Uh, so I, it, are there clutter places in my house? I'm looking at my office, my son's, I mean, my son, my husband's side of the de- office right now. Yeah, there's clutter over there. But that's his clutter. It's not mine. And uh, I'm pretty good about keeping clutter under control. Eliminated so or I guess, hidden? Mm, I'm really big if someone were to come in my house and open a, a cabinet. linen closet. Who, <laughs> like a linen closet? That's for another episode. Yeah, in case you in haven't case seen that, that, it's uh, we go back and look. It's the linen closet episode. Yeah. You'll find it. It's it's people coming to your house and opening the cabinet. So so crazy. I always think if someone were to come to my house and open a cabinet for some reason, I I would like it to look fairly organized. Do I have the junk drawer or the junk cabinet? I have a couple Mm -hmm. of those. Yeah. But for the most part, um, it's uh, aside from a couple of cabinets, I'm pretty, it's pretty organized, pretty tight, pretty Pretty tidy. tidy. I'm doing a mental check. Yeah, I, I know.